we're finishing off where we got off up to yesterday. So here we go. In August, the British captured Toulon. On the 23rd of August, faced with a dire military situation, the government called for a mobilisation of the whole nation for war. It was called Le Levy on Mars. And meanwhile, in March 1793, committees were formed to monitor foreign as and other suspects. And on 9 September that same year, the committees were given much greater powers and then from then on, anyone who by conducts their contacts, their words or by their writing, were revealed to be supporters of tyranny or federalism or the enemies of liberty could be arrested. Such a catch or phrase meant virtually anyone, anyone could have been arrested and executed. And in the following nine months, at least 16,000 people were executed. And meanwhile, the military tide turned, and in October 1793, the French army defeated the Austrians at Wattenguinis. And in December, Captain Napoleon Bonaparte recaptured Toulon. And many Jacobin, Jacobins were deist or atheist and were bitterly opposed to Christianity. And in September 1793, a movement called De Christian began and the church was persecuted, the churches were vandalised and enclosed and the church of Notre Dame was renamed the Temple of Reason and in October the new calendar was adopted and years were no longer counted from the, year from the birth of Christ instead it began on 22nd of September 1792, the first day of the Republic the years were divided into 12 months and are taken from nature and the 7 day week was replaced by a 10 day one. <coughs> but the convention became alarmed by it all and the members now feared for their lives realising that Robert's peer might arrest and execute any of them. And the only way to ensure their safety was to denounce Robespierre, Robespierre and move him from power, which they did. Uh, but he, Robespierre tried to shoot himself on the 27th of July. The boy was arrested and then sent to the guillotine on the 28th of July, 1794. And the apparatus for terror that was then dismantled and for and like very like thousands of prisoners were then released. In March 1795 many churches were reopened for worship for the first time since October 1793 and the convention now drew up a new constitution which was ready in August 1794 and France would have a bicameral legislature. Executive power was held by a group called the Directory and in October 1794 the National Guard and the Sectional Assemblies were abolished. Uh, but the Directory failed to solve like France's political problems and restore stability and by 1799 many people yearned for the return of stability and one of my like Napoleon Bonaparte kind of promised to provide it. And he first came to the public's notice in September of 1795 when he suppressed the riots in Paris with a whiff of grape shot. In 1796 to 97 he came over here when he led a campaign against Austrians in northern Italy. And 1798 to 99 he fought a campaign in Egypt, although he was successful on the land, the French fleet was shattered in the Battle of the Nile in 1798. In October 1799, Napoleon returned to France and in November he staged a coup. <coughs> and the French Revolution had ended by that point. And, the fir and Napoleon was made first consul. But there was a, over there were two consuls, but Napoleon had the real 
power out of all of them. I knew that the constitution was accepted by the people in the new referendum and that first Napoleon was made consul for 10 years. But in 1802, in another referendum, the people voted that he should be made consul for life. And in 1804, Napoleon crowned himself emperor. And Napoleon had to get some achievements from the French Revolution, like equality before the law was preserved and careers were opened to anyone of, talent, of their talent and ability. And there was no return to the priv privileged nobility. But on the other hand, he also introduced censorship of the press and even imprisonment without trial. And he also appointed prefects to run departments and created a strong centralised bureaucracy. He reduced women's rights and reintroduced slavery into the French colonies and also made a concord at a, or agreement with the Pope in 1801. And furthermore, he drew up a new code of laws to govern France. And it was published in 1804 and was called Code Napoleon. Well, his military genius allowed him to dominate Europe, and in 1799, Austria, Austria, Russia, and Britain formed a coalition against France. But Russia left a year later in 1800, and the same year, Austria was defeated and they had to make peace in 1801. And Britain made peace in 1802, but everything started up again in 1803. But however, in 1804, Russia and Austria and Britain formed a third coalition, but Austria was crushed at Austerlitz in 1805, and Prussia joined the war against France in 1806, but was crushed at Genar in the same year. But the French and Spanish fleets were severely defeated at Trafalgar in 1805 and in Napoleon's hopes of invading Britain. And despite a naval defeat in 1807, Napoleon was at his peak of power. Uh, but things began going wrong in 1812 when Napoleon in, in, in Napoleon's invasion of Russia and in, in disaster and in 1813, Prussia joined the war against France. And Austria and Sweden also joined the French join and the French were badly defeated at the Battle of Leipzig in October 1813. And in March 1814 the Allies entered Paris and Napoleon was forced to abdicate and was he was at Napoleon was exiled to Elba. But a year later, in eighteen fifteen, he returned to France and returned to France and was welcomed by the people. And he was defeated again at Waterloo, and was forced to abdicate again. And this time he was exiled to the island of St Helena, where he died in 1821. And Napoleon was replaced by Louis the 17th brother Louis the 18th. As Louis the 16th's son died in 1795. But Royalists instead became he, instead. So still he became Louis the Seventeenth after his father's death in seventeen ninety three. However, Louis the Eighteenth realized he would not could not turn back the clock completely, so he allowed France a constitution and also tried to restrain those who wanted complete to completely undo the revolution, as they were called ultra royalists. However, they gained influence after they dubbed the baby was assassinated in 1820 and when Louis XVIII died in 1824 his brother Charles XX became king and Charles claimed to rule by divine right and had no intention of compromising right with the liberals people who were more liberal and he was very an uprising in 1830 and he was forced to abdicate But the French were afraid of creating a republic as the European or European powers would have become hostile and might have taken military action. Instead, the Duc d'Orléans was made King Louis Philippe. 
Okay. And reigned for 18 years. And under him, the French constitution was made more liberal, where men were allowed to vote, but only middle classes and the workers were still excluded. And under Charles XX, the French they invaded Algeria, and under Louis Philippe, the conquest continued, but it took many, many years. At the home, the Industrial Revolution began to change France, however, industrialization was slowly, slower than like in other countries like Britain and Germany and France still remain like main mainly agricultural society. Nonetheless, by 1848, there were considerable numbers of urban workers in certain cities, and they lived and worked in dreadful and lived and work, worked in like bad conditions. And by the mid 19th century, and they were influenced by the socialist thinkers. The July monarchy was, as it was called, was really a stoppage, stopgate gap measure. And in 1846, seven France suffered an economic crisis and popular discontent was rife. And in February 1848, a demonstration was held in Paris and soldiers fired at the, on the demonstration and triggered a revolution. As Louis Philippe, was abdicated and abdicated and fled. fled. Uh, to reduce popular discontent, the provisional government created national workshops in Paris for the unemployed, as some employed workers from the provinces came to work in them. However, the workers were dissatisfied and still held demonstrations. And in June in 1848, the government decided to close the workshops and they ordered the workers to disperse, however the workers refused, and demanded barricades in Paris. Eventually the government troops crushed the uprising, known as the June Days. And in November 1848, the new constitution was published, and men were allowed to vote and there was no single elected assembly, and a popularly elected president. In December 1848, Louis Napoleon, the nephew of Napoleon Bonaparte, was elected president. But the constitution did not allow the president to serve a second term, and therefore, on the second of December, eighteen fifty-one, Napoleon led a coup, like his uncle before him, and a referendum was held, to, and the people agreed to allow the president to change the constitution, and did so in December, a year later, in eighteen fifty-two, and he made himself emperor, Napoleon the Third, because Louis the Sixteenth was executed in. 1793 and his son was never crowned. He, ne he died in 1795, however the monarchy was restored in 1814. Royalists insisted that Louis the 16th son had been Louis the 17th, even though he never ruled France. So the next Bourbon king was named Louis the 18th and Napoleon Bonaparte's so I never ruled France and had died young. Following the royalist myth, Louis Napoleon insisted that he had been Napoleon II and he called himself Napoleon III. And Napoleon III was the largely responsible for rebuilding Paris. With like wide boulevards that were built during his reign and new sewers were made to make Paris a healthier city. And he also provided employment for the masses and industrialization continued. And during Napoleon's time, he many more railways were built and new banks were founded. But he led a disastrous foreign policy and in 1852 he went to war with Russia in the Crimean War. Although the war ended successfully in 1856, France didn't gain anything from it. And in 1859, he also fought a war with Austria. But France gained little, like only Savoy and Nice. And in 1862, he France and joined Britain and Spain, sending an expedition to collect debt from Mexico. Uh, but Spain and Britain eventually withdrew, and Napoleon tried to make Max Pillen a uh, prince of Austria. The Prince of Austria, Emperor of Mexico, and the Mexicans rebelled, and in 1865, the same year the American Civil War ended, Napoleon was forced to withdraw his troops, and Maximilian was shot.
realising Niall's losing popularity after 1865 Napoleon made his regime more liberal, liberal and as he relaxed press censorship and restrictions on public meetings and workers were given the right to strike. But in 1870 Napoleon went to war with Prussia and the French were defeated in Sedan. In September Napoleon was captured and abdicated and he later fled abroad. A provisional government was formed and led by Adolphe for years. Meanwhile, the Germans surrounded Paris and the inhabitants were reduced to virtual starvation. And finally, on the 28th of January 1871, Paris was, Paris was surrendered. And by the peace treaty, France lost Alsace and Lorraine. And she also had to pay indemnity and German troops were stationed in the northern France until it was paid. And shortly after the surrender of Paris, a national assembly took control of the government and it met in Versailles. However, the Parisians were outraged at the peace treaty and try, tried to rebel. And this, the Parisians tried to form their own municipal government called the Commune and fears were determined to crush the revolt and on the 21st of May 1871 he sent in the army. And while the Germans watched the French soldiers to take the city streets, street by seat, street, there was a great loss of life and afterwards Thiers was named president and he quickly managed to pay the indemnity demanded by Germany and the last sold German soldier left France in September 17, 1873. Still scaring me. Meanwhile in 1873 Thiers was replaced by Marshal McMahon, a monarchist. And then, in 1875, the Nationalist Assembly established the Third Republic by one vote. In the late so 19th century, industrialization in France continued as the iron and chemical industries grew and rapidly. And in the early 20th century, car making became an important industry, and more railways were built and at the same time in the late 19th century, the living standards of the ordinary French people improved and their diet became better. In 1900, a law was passed limiting women and children to working no more than 10 hours a day. And in 15th of October 1895, for 1894, Captain Alfred Dreyfus, who works in the intelligence section of the General Staff of the French Army was arrested for treason. He was accused of selling military secrets to the Germans and Dreyfus was tried and sentenced to life imprisonment on Devil's Island. Uh, no, but it was later come to believe that he was Jewish and was a victim of anti Semitism. And was also an Arab Satan and was seen as an outsider and could have been completely innocent of the charges placed before him. And two years after years, a man named Lieutenant Colonel George Picard and Cody Nevin said the real culprit was Major Wilson Esther Hazy. However, the army transferred Picard to Tunisia and the military court acquitted Esther Hazy, despite the evidence. And then the novelist Emile Sola published an article in the newspaper which was called Jacuzzi, translating to I accuse, which he denounced the army cover-up. The case was split France with the light right wing and the leaders of the Catholic Church against Dreyfus and the left wing for Dreyfus. In 1899 Dreyfus was given a new court martial and but was still found guilty. But the president's pardoned Dreyfus and he returned to France and had to wait until 1906 for he was cleared of all the blame from the case. In, in, nine, in the same year of 1906, a law was passed separating the church from the state. And in 1914, France was plunged into the First World War and about 1.3 million French soldiers had died during the war. And nearly a million men were left disabled. And it was also, you now the war was like a great damage to the economy. 
as many buildings were destroyed and domestic animals were killed. And the French government was left heavily in debt. However, in the 1920s, the French economy recovered and by 1924, industrial production had reached its 1914 level. And in 1929, it had risen to 40% above the pre-war level. Many foreigners such as Poles, Italians and Spaniards came to work in France. But that same year in 29, the Wall Street crash triggered a worldwide depression. It took a while to reach France, but the economy began to slump in 1932. And in the mid-1930s, the Communists formed a common front with the Socialists, and it was called the Popular Front. And it won the 1936 election. But following the election, there was a wave of strikes and factory sit-ins. The main employers got together and made concessions. And they made a Matignon agreement with Leon Blum, the leader of the Popular Front. And the wages, wages were raised by 10% and the 40-hour week was introduced. And workers were granted two weeks paid holiday. And were, But the French economy was still depressed and unemployment remained high. And it's like, although Germany invaded Poland on the 1st of September, France and declared war on Germany on the 3rd of September, 19, September 1939. And on May the 10th, the Germans attacked neutral Holland and Belgium. And the French, British and French rushed the armies into Belgium to stop them, but the Germans' tanks threw, drove through the Ardennes and into northeastern France and drove them to the coast, cutting off like, the Allied troops. As the British Army and 140,000 French troops were evacuated by sea. However, the Germans now advanced into France and millions left French left before them. Uh, but France surrendered on the 22nd of June 1940. As the Germans imposed like harsh terms. The North and Eastern Front of France were occupied by the Germans and the French army was limited to 100,000 men. And on, then on the 10th of July 1914, the French assembly granted Pétain dictatorial powers as became the head of a new fascist, fascist state in southern France, based in Vichy. And the Vichy regime soon began to persecute Jews, however, the regime was short lived. <coughs> and the Germans occupied southern France in November 1942. And the Furthermore, the Germans drained France of its resources, and hundreds of thousands of Frenchmen were forced to go and work in Germany. The Germans also took much of the French industries, goods. Yeah. Can I just do something quickly? I'm not gonna stay. What is it? That, that thing. The one with the purple flowers on. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Plants. Yeah. I really hope I don't fall down on that. Can I only want? Yeah. Just no, being danger prone. Sorrel. Mm -hmm. That's a bit hard. No, make sure you don't catch my printer with you. <laughs> It's also also really handy if she's there. Uh... No. She'd probably fall down the stairs I 
Oh, it doesn't, isn't there a thing on the back for the microphone? Yeah, that's not going to work, but never mind. <laughs> See you later. See ya. Oh, See ya. <laughs> there we go. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> that dull sound the microphone goes in. Germans took many French industries goods and they took much of the French, French agricultural produce and as a result there was my widespread malnutrition in France. Meanwhile resistant groups were formed in France while in England Charles de Gaulle became leader of the French forces, still fighting Germany, the Germans. And in the summer of 1944 the Allies liberated France and de Gaulle was, became provisional president. And he soon quarrelled with the newly elected assembly and resigned in January 1946. A new constitution was drawn up in 1947. However, Steph had a status of the goals of the new constitution. Yeah? However, from the start, he de Gaulle imposed a new constitution. He feared that the previous series of weak governments, however, in the late 1940s, France quickly recovered from the war. And in 1951, French industrial production had reached pre war levels. And in the 1950s, France had trouble with its colonies. And in the late 19th century, France had built up an empire in South East Asia. However, in 1945, Vietnam fought for independence. And in 1954, the Communists won a great victory in Dien Bien Phu, and France was forced to withdraw. France also split over the issue, issue of Algerian independence. And in the 13th, on 13th of May 1958, French colonists in Algeria seized power, and France was threatened with civil war. And movements, moments of crisis on the 1st of June 1958, the National Assembly voted to give the Gaulle emergency passed for six months and the Fourth Republic came to an end. And then when de Gaulle called the referendum for a revised constitution in September 1958 and the French voted overwhelmingly in favour. And he, de Gaulle gave himself as president like increased power. And in 1959, the Gaulle entered into negotiations with the FLN in Nigeria. However, in 1961, French colonists in Algeria formed the OASC organization, Army Secretary, Secretary, to fight against independence. Attempts were made to assassinate de Gaulle. But in July 1962, Algeria voted for independence, and de Gaulle was re elected in 19. 65 well, by a na narrow majority. And in May 1968, France exploded as it began to protest among students at the University of Nantere. And the protest soon spread to the Sabane, Sabane. And workers joined in, also joined the protest. And on the 10th of May, the riot police attacked demonstrators in response of trade unions. The trade unions called a general strike and protests spent and spread across France. 
the Communist Party continued to support, support de Gaulle and the Finland Prime Minister Georges Pompidou. They fused working class anger by offering wage rises and de Gaulle called an election and knows a right wing backlash and the right took control of the French Assembly and the crisis fizzled out. And de Gaulle resigned in 1969 but, and died a year later in 1970. And the girl was replaced by Georges Pompidou and he was re-elected in 1972 but died soon afterwards and was succeeded by Valérie Giscard d'Estaing. Although the French economy boomed in the 1760s and 70s, inflation and unemployment rose. And in 1981 François Mitterrand was elected president. Mitterrand was a socialist under him. The welfare state was enlarged and working hours were reduced. However, the dream soon turned sour and French forces devalued French France several times by the early 1980s and both inflation and unemployment rose. As Mitterrand changed course to introduce wage fees is in cut to public spending and in 1986 inflation had fallen and unemployment. Though high was stable, Mitterrand was re-elected in 1988 and by 1995 he was replaced by Jacques Chirac. 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 Nicolas Sarkozy was elected as president in 2007 and France was one of the four founding members of the EU in 1957. And in 1999 France joined the Euro and today France is a very rich, is like a rich country with a population of 66 million. So yeah, end of part three, and I'll be back soon with part four. So yeah, I'll see you all very soon. So yeah, au revoir.